Imagine spending more than half of your life behind bars for a crime you did not commit. Imagine being denied justice, freedom and dignity for decades while the real perpetrator walks free. Imagine being a victim of racial discrimination, police misconduct and judicial corruption. This is the nightmare that Ronnie Long endured until he was finally exonerated and compensated for his ordeal. Ronnie Long was born in 1955 in Concord, North Carolina, a small city with a history of racial segregation and tension. He grew up in a poor and predominantly black neighborhood where he faced discrimination and harassment from the white authorities and residents. He dropped out of high school and worked as a laborer and a mechanic. He also had a few run-ins with the law, mostly for minor offenses, such as trespassing and marijuana possession. On the night of April 25, 1976, Long's life changed forever. He was 20 years old, and he had gone to a local courthouse to attend a hearing for a friend. He was wearing a leather jacket, which caught the attention of two police officers, who asked him to step outside. They searched him and found nothing illegal. They then took him to a nearby police station, where they interrogated him for hours without a lawyer or a warrant. They accused him of raping a white woman named Sarah Bost, who lived in a wealthy neighborhood. Bost had been attacked in her home by an intruder who wore gloves and a mask and who fled after the assault. She had given a vague description of her assailant, saying he was a black man, about six feet tall, with a light complexion and a possible mustache. Long denied any involvement in the crime and said he had never met or seen Bost before. He also had an alibi, as he was with his girlfriend and her family at the time of the attack. He asked for a polygraph test, but the police refused. He asked for a lineup, but the police arranged a rigged one, where he was the only suspect wearing a leather jacket and where Bost was told to pick him out. She did, and identified him as her rapist. She also testified against him in court, saying she was absolutely positive he was the one who attacked her. Long was charged with first-degree burglary and rape and faced the death penalty. He was tried by an all-white jury in a racially charged atmosphere. The prosecution relied heavily on Bost's identification and presented no physical evidence linking Long to the crime. The defense tried to challenge Bost's credibility and to expose the flaws and biases in the police investigation. However, they were unaware of the crucial evidence that the police had hidden from them, such as more than 40 fingerprints collected from the crime scene, none of which matched Long's. A rape kit and semen samples taken from Bost, which were never tested or disclosed to the defense. Hair and fiber samples found on Bost's clothing and bed sheets, which were never analyzed or compared to Long's. Statements from other witnesses who contradicted Bost's account of the attack and the assailant's appearance. The jury deliberated for less than two hours and found Long guilty of both charges. He was sentenced to two consecutive life terms in prison. He was shocked and devastated by the verdict, but he never gave up hope. He maintained his innocence and appealed his conviction several times, but to no avail. He also sought help from various organizations and individuals who believed in his case and supported his cause. Among them were the Duke Law Wrongful Convictions Clinic, the North Carolina Center on Actual Innocence, the Innocence Project, and his wife Ashley Long, whom he married in 2014 while in prison. Long's breakthrough came in 2015, when his lawyers obtained a court order to access the files of the State Bureau of Investigation, SBI, which had assisted the Concord Police in the original investigation. They discovered the hidden evidence that proved Long's innocence, and that showed the extent of the police misconduct and cover-up. They filed a motion for a new trial based on this newly discovered evidence. However, the state courts denied the motion, saying the evidence was not material or exculpatory and that Long had failed to show his innocence. Long's lawyers then took his case to the federal courts, where they finally found justice. In August 2020, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit ruled that Long's constitutional rights had been violated and that he deserved a new trial. The court said that the hidden evidence was extremely favorable to Long and that it cast strong doubt on his guilt. The court also said that the police had engaged in extreme and continuous misconduct and that the state courts had unreasonably rejected Long's claims. The court ordered the state to either release Long or retry him within 30 days. The state chose to release Long and dropped all charges against him. On August 27, 2020, 
long walked out of prison, a free man, after 44 years of wrongful incarceration. He was 64 years old and had spent more than two-thirds of his life behind bars. He was greeted by his wife, his family, his friends, and his supporters who cheered and hugged him. He was also granted a full pardon of innocence by Governor Roy Cooper, which made him eligible for compensation from the state. In December 2020, Long received $750,000 from the state, which was the maximum amount allowed by law for victims of wrongful imprisonment. However, Long and his lawyers felt that this amount was inadequate and insufficient. Considering the magnitude and duration of his suffering, they filed a civil lawsuit against the city of Concord and the SBI, seeking damages for the violation of his civil rights. They accused the defendants of malicious prosecution, false imprisonment, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and conspiracy. The lawsuit was settled in January 2024, with Long receiving a historic $25 million settlement, which was one of the largest ever awarded to a wrongfully convicted person in the US. The settlement also included a public apology from the city of Concord, which expressed its deep remorse for the past wrongs that caused tremendous harm to Long and his loved ones. The SBI also paid $3 million to Long for its role in hiding evidence from him and his legal team. Long accepted the settlement and the apology but he said that no amount of money or words could ever make up for what he had lost and endured. He said that he was still angry and bitter about the injustice and racism that he faced and that he wanted to see accountability and reform in the criminal justice system. He also said that he wanted to use his experience and his voice to help other innocent people who were still in prison and to prevent future wrongful convictions. He said that he wanted to live the rest of his life with dignity and purpose and to enjoy the simple pleasures that he had missed for so long, such as spending time with his wife, his family and his friends, traveling, fishing and watching sports. Ronnie Long's story is a tragic and inspiring one that exposes the flaws and failures of the criminal justice system and that celebrates the power and perseverance of the human spirit. It is a story that raises questions and challenges about the meaning and value of justice, freedom and dignity. It is a story that deserves to be told and remembered by all who care about truth and humanity.